tips to strike an arc and tie in and finish a bead. Okay, so have a couple different pictures here, but uh, I'm going to read this up at the top. Strike an immediately long arc for about one full second. So let's say you strike off this edge. Just strike a long arc for a second, maybe a quarter inch off the metal. One one thousand. If you allow yourself to long arc for about a second, a full one one thousand, it'll preheat the rod and the base metal, which will help prevent sticking to the base metal. So if you're one of those new welders and your electrode is constantly sticking, you need to long arc one one thousand, create some heat and it'll it'll go away. Your your issue will uh, no longer be there. Also gives time for shielding gas to build up and, and slag to form as well. Especially with a 7018, I'm going to write that one down. That people get porosity here at the start because they don't pause. You have to strike. Build up shielding gas. We're shielding out the atmosphere and anything else. The slag is cleaning the base metal and bringing those impurities to the, to the surface of the bead. So strike and give yourself some time. Once you get going, go slow, stay close. Go slow, stay close. I can't stress that enough. Uh, if you're farther away, you're shooting spatter everywhere, you're preheating the entire part uh, more than it probably needs to. You're creating a heat affected zone that's bigger than necessary. Uh, there's a whole lot that goes with there with that issue. So strike, stay close, go slow, okay? So you strike, doing a little stringer going across to get to the end. And then you're going to hold the filler right at the end of the pass to fill the crater, the hole that was created by the heat of the arc. So that arc is immediately melting that base metal. It's 6 to 10,000 degrees. It's hot. That base metal is going to melt around 2,800 degrees. We're talking specifically steel. So it's not going to have a problem melting that base metal, creating a little bit of a crater. So we want to make sure that we fill that crater when we get to the end. Anytime you get undercut on these sides, it really in any process is that your arc cut the metal but you just didn't fill it so is it an arc length issue is it a speed issue is it an amperage issue it could really be any of these okay if you're going to tie in then you can leave the crater there because you're going to tie in okay so that's all i'm saying there just avoid the fill because we're going to tie in so here's a little tip when you tie in use a g shape but move quickly. Strike slightly in front of the leading edge of the crater. So strike up here, just in front of the crater that you left. Carry it backwards in a C shape first. So strike, carry it back, C, follow the edge of the crater. You're tracing those edges, and then kind of come to the middle, and then just drop a little bit extra in the middle, and then get out of there. This is a pretty quick thing. It happens you know, you strike, carry back, quick C into a G, boom, get out. Then you can get back into your whip pause, your stringer, your weave, whatever it is. Uh, and actually, weave could be different because you might be carrying all the way across like an L shape, but we show that in our classes as well. Okay, so that's strike, tie in, finish a beat. Strike, long arc, build up gas, slag, tie in, C to G shape and also fill your crater. Okay, let's go ahead and look how we stack metal in two different joints. So we have both a fillet weld, which is specifically a T, and then we have a groove weld, and this one specifically a butt weld. So what I want to point out is this is a 90 degree T, and it's kind of cool how this works. So I'm going to point this out. We're going to use this as our root pass, and for every bead you make, there should be one, two toes, okay? So each side is a toe, okay? When it's a 90 degree T, this works out fantastic. Uh, I'd say 99% of the time. If you see uh, one, two toes, stack two beads, bead one, B2, okay? Now you should be able to see one, two, three toes. Stack one, two, three beads, okay? 
and it and it works good. Obviously, this animation isn't uh, probably the best, but you know you're not going to have these valleys in there. It should be flat across to slightly convex. Now, looking at the groove weld, we have a uh, 45 degree V groove. The angle is probably irrelevant. Uh, chances are you'll never see a 90 degree V groove. Okay, that's uh, not a good method. You wouldn't cut both of these at 45 and then have a 90. Um, you're going to create a huge heat affected zone and you'll have other issues. Anyways, so if we were to try to stack like we did over here where we went one, two, three, so on and so forth, we could run into this problem. So you get your root pass in there, no problem. But then you try to stack two stringers, it's not going to happen. Okay, you're not going to be able to cut in like that. So really what's going to happen is this is going to start stacking up unequally, even if you can get to that. Or maybe even you have some incomplete fusion here. So let's try that again. You know, maybe you do a slight weave on the second pass or hot pass, whatever you want to call it. Next one, see if you can get a couple stringers in there. Okay, we kind of fill it out. How about one stringer and then one slight weave? That seems to bring it out pretty equally. A couple of stringers, maybe two side by side. Maybe that in the middle. A couple more stringers, bringing this just below flush. Okay, and then we cap it out. And so maybe this cap is four slight weaves or four stringers or maybe two weaves. It, it really doesn't matter. So what I want to point out is what I wrote up here. As long as, as, long as you have uh, welds that are free of any discontinuities, it doesn't really matter how you stack them. Um, the idea is to really just bring them up equally as you layer in these beads. And then obviously there's going to be some restrictions as the height and things like that. We don't want to see any slag trap or anything else in here. Um, so that's obviously an issue. So we can avoid that by just stacking as we see it. And that's what makes uh, somebody a good welder. Being able to look at the joint and fill it out as you go using different techniques. Like I said, weave, stringer, it doesn't matter. Finally, weld bead contour. So here I have my uh, T and groove again, and we're looking at having a slightly convex or flat contour, okay? We are not looking for a concave contour. If we can avoid it, we, we want to, okay? This is called reinforcement. Uh, it's not called convex or concave. It's reinforcement if you have any. This would be totally flush. If you can get it totally flush, great. In most cases, we just look for a little bit of reinforcement, and that go, that'll that actually go ahead and, and provide just a little bit more strength at the joint, okay? I, I mentioned this in some of my other videos, but the base metal is probably about half the strength of your filler rods. Your filler rods are probably around 70,000 PSI in most cases, and your base metal is about 36,000 tensile strength. So we're talking double the strength, so when we put all that extra in there and it's welded out, we're good to go.